So good afternoon. I'm going to present today a methodology to optimize a polymer injection project. We're going to compare three different polymers and water injection as well and select which one of those polymers is the best and optimum to uh, inject in our field. My name is Victor Salazar. I work for CMG for 20 years now and I'm the regional manager for Latin America. I'm going to give a brief introduction on the process and uh, explain a little bit about the physical phenomena involved. Also talk about the typical workflow and the suggested workflow for this kind of processes, compare three polymers, water injection, and optimize it with a CMOS. Polymer injection is an enhanced oil recovery technique in which a polymer solution is injected into the reservoir to increase the water viscosity. This provides fluid mobility control and yields to a better sweep efficiency because we are going to mitigate the water fingering and channeling. And of course, after we all do all this, we're going to get a higher oil recovery factor. The phenomena involved can be divided in three groups depending on which phase we are affecting. So the first group is the water phase. Uh, the viscosity of the water increases with the polymer concentration. And this is because it alters the mobility ratio. The mobility ratio is, a, is the relationship between the mobility of the water and the mobility of the oil. And that mobility is the relative permeability over the viscosity. So when we increase the viscosity, that relationship reduces the mobility ratio. And when we do that, we create a better and uniform water front and push the oil more efficiently. The viscosity of the polymer is reduced when we uh, increase the shear rate. And uh, we have two effects here, shear thinning and shear thickening. So the usual is that uh, the viscosity is reduced with, the with velocity. But when we have viscoelastic fluids or dilatant fluids, we have the opposite. When we increase the velocity, we also increase the viscosity. We can model both effects in our simulators. The viscosity is reduced with salinity. So we need to take that into account because the viscosity on surface is going to be different than the viscosity when the polymer uh, touches the, the reservoir and gets mixed with the water formation. And the last uh, factor in the, in the water phase is the residual resistance factor. This is a factor that is measured in the lab as the uh, delta P after the treatment, after the polymer injection, over uh, the delta P before the injection. So this happens because when you inject polymer, some of the particles get trapped on the surface of the rock and reduces the space of the pore volume. And if you are injecting at a constant rate, then you need to put more pressure to get the same rate. So we need to measure that. The oil phase, uh, authors, literature, they don't report anything that is being affected in this phase. But on the rock, we have uh, three different and important effects. Absorption is the first one. This is uh, when you inject polymer, the particles get trapped on the surface of the rock until a certain point, that is a, a maximum absorption. And uh, uh, we, we have another concept here. If you stop injecting polymer and begins injecting fresh water, that fresh water tends to remove or desorb those particles again until a certain point when we reach the minimum or residual absorption. So this means that if the residual absorption is less than the maximum, the process is reversible. And if the residual absorption is the same as the maximum, then the process is reversible. And we can model both in our simulators. The second uh, effect is the inaccessible pore volume. This is that uh, since the polymer is a big molecule, it cannot reach the whole pore volume. There is a certain uh, pores or volume that cannot get affected by the polymer. And we need to measure that and introduce that in the simulators. The third effect is the residual oil saturation reduction. This is a, there is some controversial things here because some people say that this is related to the capillary number. When you increase the capillary number, the residual oil saturation reduces, but the capillary number is relating the viscous forces over the interfacial tension forces. So the viscous forces is the viscosity times the velocity. So when you increase velocity, the viscosity decreases. So one increase, the other decrease, and at the end, it balances the capillary number, and it doesn't change that much. However, when we have the viscoelastic fluids, when you increase velocity, it also increases viscosity. So then we have the reduction of the SOR. As a parallel effect, we have the degradation. This says the, how the polymer reduces its viscosity with time, and it's a, because mechanical, thermal, chemical, or even biological mm -hmm. effects. Which simulator should I use? CMG has three simulators. 
IMEX, our black oil simulator, STARS, our K-value thermal and chemical simulator, and GEM, our equation of state compositional simulator. Both STARS and GEM can model all these effects that we just described, and IMEX uh, model most of them with some exceptions like polymer degradation, polymer viscosity versus salinity, SOR reduction, and different polymer evaluation. This means if you want to evaluate different polymers in the same run, IMEX cannot do that. In this case, we are going to select stars. Now, going to the workflow. So we start with the core floating in the lab. We need to calibrate that his, that those values that the lab is giving us with the reservoir simulator model and uh, represent that model in stars and match it with CMOS. So CMOS will help us to reduce the global error, the, the parameters that are measured in the lab versus the parameters that the simulator is giving us. Once we calibrate that model, we need to take that model to a field scale. In the meantime, we suggest to use a mega core. Mega core is nothing else but uh, the same core, uh, representing the core in the lab, but using the same size of the blocks that we are going to use in the field scale. So once we have that mega core calibrated, then we are ready to go and implement our polymer injection into the field. In our case, it was going to be a five spot pattern inverted. So the injector in the middle and four producers around. The first run we're going to make is an uh, injection rate 1500 barrels per day for the injection of polymer. Water and polymer slug is going to be 0.1 per volume. The polymer concentration 500 ppm. The pressure of bottom hole of the producers 400 and the slug duration 300 days. So this is going to be our first run and then once we do that then we start the optimization with CMOS. So CMOS will help us to maximize an objective function that in our case is going to be the net present values. So we're going to maximize the money of our, our project and that function, I'm going to explain that a little later in, in the next slides, is going to relate the cost and the income of the company on this thing. So we have three polymers, as I said, different providers, of course, plus water. We're going to compare those with water. Polymer number three, for example, has a viscosity 9 centipoise at uh, 1,000 1, uh, ppm. The absorption of that polymer is 20 milligrams per 100 grams of row. Residual resistance factor is 2, 95% of uh, accessible pore volume, and the cost is 0.9 per pound. On the other hand, polymer 2 has a better viscosity, 12 centipoise, but the absorption is higher, is 50. The residual resistance factor is 3.15. The accessible port volume is good as well, 90%, but the cost is 1.9. So just, I'm saying that because just looking at this table, it's not obvious to select what polymer is going to work the best in, in, in our project. So we really need to model all those and optimize the strategy. So optimization means that we need to create a matrix of parameters of sens different sensitivities and variate all those numbers. The first one will be what kind of fluid I'm going to inject. So water, polymer one, two, and three. We're going to also change the polymer concentration going from 500 to 1500 ppm. The size of the slugs, volume of, of water and polymer that we are going to inject going from zero to one po per volume injection rate that goes from 500 to 4,000 barrels per day, and the bottom hole pressure from 250 to 600 PSI. So these parameters will create, all those combinations will create a matrix that CMOS will help us to find the best uh, answer and solution. How? It's going to maximize this function, the net present value uh, objective function, that it relates the oil price, that in our case was 55 US per barrel, it also relates the cost of the company in terms of production water, the treatment of the water that we are going to produce, 0.25 US per barrel, the cost of each polymer, 1 1.4, 1 1.9, 0.9, and the cost of the money per year, that is 10% in our case. This formula is already there in CMOS. It's a relatively simple formula, but the user can be as complex as he wants with a third-party program. CMOS can connect with Excel, for example, we could have a very complex macro including all the costs of drilling, etc., and make the, that macro calculate the VP and the, the net present value, go back to CMOS, and then have a realistic economical model for that company. So we are going to have these results, by the way. CMOS ran the history match of the core in, in one hour and 40 minutes. It was really fast. And the optimization, it took 13 hours to run the whole thing. So 
from those parameters that we evaluated, uh, that we were going to make sensitivities, the possible combinations were above 1 million experiments. We found the answer in about 450 to here. So we started this point above 20 million US dollars, and then it began optimizing the, the function and re reached the optimum value at, at around 27 million US. CMOS gives us a different kind of plots. This is uh, one of the examples. We can check X, Y plots. In this case, we have cumulative oil production. We started with this black curve. The light blue curves are the different experiments, and the red curve is the optimum solution. Of course, we're going to have more water production rate, but remember that that cost is associated in our objective function. Another way to look at the results are cross plots. In the left-hand plot, we have cumulative oil production and the different types of fluids, water, polymer 1, polymer 2, and 3. Remember that we started our first round with polymer 1, but it was polymer 3, the selected one, and that gave the best solution, I mean the maximum MPV. Please take a look that there is another alternative that gives a, a better cumulative oil production, but probably is not as economical as this solution. Another way to look at results are the histograms. So in this case, polymer 3 was selected. The histogram gives us how many times a certain value was used in the different uh, possible combinations. For example, 1,500 ppms was used more than 80% of the times of all those 450 runs that we did. In the right-hand side, we can take a look that, uh, for example, water injection, it was discarded right away. We can see that zero pore volume of water was used almost 100% of the times, meaning that uh, polymer was better than just pure water injection. So this is the re these are the results of the optimization that we did with CMOS. So the type of polymer selected was polymer number three at a concentration of 1,500 ppm, zero pore volume of water, so no water injected, 0.7 pore volume of polymer, the slug duration was uh, 788 days. The pressure of the producers, 250 PSI. The injection rate, 4,000 barrels per day. And the incremental that we got on oil was 262,000 barrels with an incremental in, in money of seven, above $7 million. Take a look at this graph. It's a very interesting graph because the first curve that we had was the red curve that is very close to the water injection one. So, any person could say, well, it's not economical to inject polymer. We didn't, we didn't increment really the cumulative oil production, but take into account that that red curve was without optimizing the process. Once we optimize it, then we will reach a better answer. So as a conclusion, we can say that Emex, Gem, and STARS are all capable of modeling polymer injection. CMOS was used not just to history match the polymer core floating, but also to select which polymer should be injected and the optimum technical and economical strategy. Polymer 3 was selected and to, to be the appropriate fluid to be injected because uh, it increments the, the oil and the MPV was the optimum. And performing an optimization with CMOS, we obtained that a strategy that was optimized. We got 262,000 barrels additional oil when you compare that with the water injection uh, strategy and seven million of US dollars of additional income when compared to the water injection strategy. So this concludes my talk. I hope this information is useful and uh, it motivates everybody to use our software and CMOS to optimize the projects.